With a bold notion, Giuliani wiped away all of Mueller's work to take down Trump by US4Trump.com. Let's hope. Rudy Giuliani hit the airwaves on Fox News Media Buzz with Howard Kurtz. The pair discussed the Mueller investigation in an open and frank interview on how the public has turned away from the Mueller witch hunt. According to polls, it's true the American people do not trust that Mueller is objective any longer. Boston Globe reports polls show that Republicans are losing faith in Mueller's objectivity. In November, some 41% of Republicans said they thought that he was conducting a fair investigation into any links or coordination between Trump's campaign and the Russian government. In April, that uh, number was 26%. One of the big issues is the midterm elections. If the Mueller probe goes into 90 days before the midterms of November 6th, then it is widely accepted that it is uh, politically motivated, something the DOJ has already been accused of under Obama. Ironically, it was CNN who announced uh, the last memo on the topic issued by Attorney General Loretta Lynch in 2016 states, politics must play no role in the decisions of federal investigators or prosecutors regarding any investigation or criminal charges. To be clear, President Trump has no criminal charges. Certainly, the memo was written to help Hillary out since she was under criminal charges going into the 2016 presidential election. It just so happens it all works for the ill-started Mueller special counsel investigation on President Trump. Mueller has to follow those rules. Howard points to the media war on the uh, Mueller case. Recently, a New York Times reporter, Nick uh, Confessor, uh, took Rudy's words out of context, and Rudy uh, was having no part of it. Confessor uh, was spinning it so hard that it's uh, surprising his head didn't twist off, he said. Uh, what he, meaning Rudy Giuliani, said in that interview that the president's story, if told to Mueller, would put him into perjury. So what's, uh, what he's saying is the president's story is wrong. It's a lie. He just admitted it on national TV. With his arms crossed in a power position, Giuliani said. Howie, let's uh, examine that. I don't know if he's being deliberately like that or if he's a complete moron, but the reality is you can be accused of perjury when you're telling the absolute truth. Then Giuliani gives the example that Comey uh, could set the trap for perjury with President Trump by lying about the Flynn case. Rudy gave the example that if someone said he went to Howie's house last night and under oath Rudy says, no, I didn't go to Howie's house last night, but they elect to believe Howie, then a perjury trap has been successfully set because it is under Mueller's jur uh, jurisdiction to choose who to believe. Wow, that's very important. The Mueller probe will be held in the court of public opinion. Since there is no court case because there was never a crime committed by the president, and since it is being proven that the Mueller probe was started in a nefarious fashion, the Mueller probe will end in the court of public opinion. The reality is this is not a court case, said Giuliani. The former prosecutor and Republican mayor of New York City, public opinion will be very important. Think of it this way. They are our jury, our grand jury, as reports the Washington Examiner. Let's take a uh, quick listen here. Very important. <laughs> From the day he joined President Trump's legal team, the former mayor of New York has been a constant TV presence in the battle against Robert Mueller, driving the news cycle and taking plenty of media flack in the process. And joining me now from New York is Rudy Giuliani. Welcome. <laughs> How are you? Uh, doing well. We'll uh, drill down on these issues in just a second. But first, since you've been on the case, how would you describe the overall media coverage of the Mueller investigation? Uh, hysterical. Um, 
at times taking uh, what are things that are totally unimportant or relatively unimportant and driving it into all kinds of uh, exaggerations. Uh, I think it's a hard, a bit of a hard case for them to handle because uh, many of these things are very kind of lawyer-like arguments. They never understand when you're arguing in the alternative where you say, you know, uh, even though it didn't occur, it would be perfectly legal, uh, and it didn't. And, and lawyers argue that all the time. They get confused. And then there's always, you know, there's the prevailing bias against him. I mean, they didn't want him elected. They're trying to delegitimatize him. Uh, many of them remind me of, uh, of Peter Strzok in the FBI. They probably were texting the same things. You're com about comparing how many of the journals who cover the president to FBI agent Peter Strzok. It's interesting. No, having the same sentiments that he had. That, uh, listen, I, I heard them say it. He, he would be a menace. He would be terrible. He would well, be terrible some, for the country. Some pundits and journalists, absolutely. All right, let's get down to it. The media's rap on you, Mr. Mayor, is that you keep moving the goalposts, that you say, oh, Donald Trump is dying to testify, but then you keep offering such narrow terms like uh, some written questions, no questions on obstruction, that you make it impossible for Mueller to accept, uh, and then you run out of the clock. It's not impossible to accept. I mean, uh, the reality is that we've made a good faith offer to him. Uh, he didn't reject it immediately, which is a good sign. We mm -hmm. did it back last week. I think that... Um, I think he would say that we've negotiated with him in good faith. He hasn't. We haven't given him all that he wants. We haven't given him all that all that uh, he would like of us. Yeah. But um, th there's a there's a there's a way that the president would take and answer questions, but we're just not going to subject him to what we call per perjury traps. In fact, I, I kind of think it would be malpractice if we did. Well, I covered you when you worked for the uh, Reagan Justice Department here in Washington. I covered you when you were the U.S. Attorney in Manhattan. I also covered your first mayor's race, which didn't work out so well. Uh, if a defense lawyer had said to you, and I understand it's different when you're representing a uh, sitting president, but if a defense lawyer had said to you, well, we need to limit your questioning of our client, you would have laughed the person out of the room. No, I wouldn't. I, I, I didn't get to question most of the people that I, that I prosecuted or that I decided not to prosecute. It's highly unusual that a person who is, whatever you want to call it, the subject of an investigation, we know he's not the target. Right. Uh, it, it, it's very unusual that they ever testify. Most of my prosecutorial decisions were made without the benefit of what the defendant or possible defendant would say. And uh, they can make this decision without that. They have the benefit of knowing what he's going to say because he has given a full explanation. No collusion with the Russians. He didn't have that conversation with Flynn, and he had a very in-depth interview with Lester Holt, in which he explained his reasons for firing Mueller. Uh, I'm sorry, fi firing Comey. Right. Okay. No. No. He hasn't fired there. Mueller. Yeah, I don't want to make news. But yeah. Well, you almost <laughs> did. But let me ask you. I want to play something for you uh, because you have been talking about a perjury trap that Mueller would allegedly set. You said this was Sean Hannity the other night. Here's uh, some comments by New York Times reporter Nick Confessori. Roll it. What he said in that interview is that the president's story, if told to Mueller, would put him into perjury. Right. So what he's saying is the president's story is wrong. It's a lie. He just admitted it on national TV. So that's what well, the pundits are saying, that the president tells no, the no, truth. But Howie, no Howie, let, let's examine that. I mean, I don't know if he's deliberately being like that or he's a complete moron. But the reality is uh, you, can, can, you can be accused of perjury when you're telling the absolute truth. Let me give you an example for that idiot, uh, which I attribute really to the malice of the, of the New York Times. The president would testify, if asked, that the conversation about Flynn did not take place. This is where um, Comey, Jim Comey claims that he was correct. asked, if, could you give the, uh, Flynn, uh, Flynn a break in your yeah, investigation? Pre pre uh, we've even told the president that if he said that, it's okay. I mean, it, it's perfectly right. justified. But the president maintains he did not say that. Did not have the conversation. He said, I'm not going to tell a lie. I can't. So if he were to testify to that, even though Comey has a prior statement under oath, similar to the president's, that there was no obstruction, no statement of obstruction, they could charge him with perjury. It's in their discretion to do that. Oh, wait, but you're be, saying that the president has said these things publicly, but if he says them under oath, they could charge him with perjury, therefore you don't want him to testify. I mean, that sounds like to a lot of people like... I know it does, because they're being deliberately, uh, uh, they're being deliberately malicious about it. I mean, the reality is, uh, 
I, 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 uh, I didn't come to your house last night. You're lying. And you said, you're saying I, I did come to your house. They put me under oath and I said, I didn't go to Howie's house last night. But they elect to believe Howie, even though Howie lied about it twice. I have no control over that. That's what they did to Martha Stewart. I mean, uh, and since that case, all us lawyers have been very careful. Even Judge Ellis, way back in the Manafort case, said basically, you guys are trying to set perjury traps. Well, just for the I, record, you know, Mueller was a duly appointed special counsel by the deputy attorney general. And also a lot of other pundits have been making the point uh, that Nick Confessori of The New York Times made. Let me ask you this, because you've been talking yeah, about all the other pundits are completely wrong. OK, the reality that's why is, you're here to give us your the side. reality is and any lawyer will tell you this. Truth is, is, is in the eye of the beholder. And my client can be telling the truth. Their witness can be a total scoundrel. And if they decide to go with their witness, my client's going to get indicted or charged with perjury in some way. Okay. So I don't know if they just don't want to understand or they want to say the president's lying. I will tell you, he's not lying. All the evidence is against Comey on this. Uh, the notion that you've been pushing that Mueller needs to wrap up by the or beginning of September, earlier you would say July 4th. Um, again, if you were running the Southern District of New York, and, and the defense lawyer had said to you, you know, you really need to wrap this thing up, I mean, you would have said, nice try, buddy. Not if I was going to run into an election and violate the Justice Department's basic guideline, like Comey did, for which he was excoriated by For which he was properly excoriated, but there is no uh, even in informal guideline that says you can't continue an investigation during an, an election. You're supposed not to do anything publicly like well, you, bring I mean, charges you're, you're or, right. or make I mean, an announcement. If you can't help it, fine. But if in good faith you can get it over with before, and he could, you should get it over with. You shouldn't deliberately run it into the election. And, and frankly, I, not, I'm not sure that Mueller wouldn't agree with that if he were asked. And I, I still think that he's going to try to wrap this up sometime in early September. He and his people made it clear they didn't want to make the same mistakes that Comey made. Right. Well, we, sh we shall see uh, how the timetable works out. Now, you get personally hammered a lot in uh, and your very public role here. Uh, particularly on MSNBC. So, for example, just to give you a chance to respond, <laughs> uh, Nicole Wallace, former Bush White House uh, official, said, oh, my God, Rudy needs to check his carbon monoxide monitors. And Joe Scarborough, one time Republican congressman, said, and while criticizing some of your comments, his eyes are bulging while he's talking and he looks disoriented. Do you feel disoriented, Mr. Mayor? Absolutely. I'm completely disoriented. I, I'm sure it sounds that way. Is there something wrong? I mean, doesn't this give you an indication uh, uh, Howie, of, of, of what you cover, of how completely disoriented the press is and how, how to control they are, not only criticizing the president, but everybody around him. I don't know. You can disagree with me. I'm, I'm hardly disoriented. Uh, I know where I am. I know who I am. And uh, I don't even think it's worth commenting, except for the fact that aren't they way out of control as journalists uh, accusing you of some kind of mental illness? Well, that's in the political coverage of Donald Trump as opposed to the coverage of the investigation. Uh, hey, look, a lot of the coverage of President Trump is negative, but Mueller is running an investigation where there have been indictments and guilty pleas. So sure. let me go ahead. But it's one thing. It's one thing to do that. It's another thing to say that a person disoriented who's not. It's another thing to say that. The, I mean, they've said that about the president, right? Uh, all the time. Uh, Scarborough has said that. Scarborough has got some deep animus to uh, to, to the president. Well, I, I mean, all of MSNBC does. Let me ask you about the broader media indictment, again, for you to have a chance to respond. So initially, the president said he didn't know anything about any Stormy Daniel payment. Later, you disclosed that he had, in fact, reimbursed for the $130,000 payment. Uh, uh, after that Trump Tower meeting with the Russian lawyer, uh, the White House had said the president didn't personally dictate uh, the first statement when that story came out. Uh, now your team says he did. Jay Sekulow went on television and said he'd been given the wrong information. What journalists say is that it's like pulling teeth to get these admissions. Your response. I, it, when you consider the 1.4 million documents, the thousands of pieces of information, to have two or three that originally and initially were, were, were wrong is hardly uh, anything but our wanting to try to get the facts as straight as possible. Um, I mean, the, the, these are not unusual things in an investigation. Usually you get a chance to correct these things until you go on the record and we haven't been on the record yet and we're willing we're willing to stipulate uh, for the uh, special counsel 
on uh, what the president would say. Uh, we've got it down to, I think now, uh, something we're really comfortable with. You said that you thought Michael Cohen was honest, and you found out he had taped Donald Trump, and now you say he's discredited as a witness. But uh, you've put cooperating witnesses on the stand. For example, in the famous Mafia Commission trial, your office called Angela Leonardo, underboss of the Cleveland crime family, who's the highest ranking Mafia person ever to testify. So I'm not comparing the two. But it's not unusual in trials for somebody who has pleaded guilty to a crime to be used as a witness. It's not, a, it's not unusual, and it's not unusual to try and impeach them. And then it becomes a question of how bad is it and how clear is the impeachment. Uh, the reality is that, that on tape, uh, Michael Cohen has said all the things uh, that you would need to completely come to the conclusion that the president did nothing wrong. So anything he says now is going to have to contradict that. And of course we're going to utilize that because we believe he'll be doing it in order to uh, basically sing for his supper. I mean, I don't, I, would Michael Cohen lie, a man who, as a lawyer, taped his own client, a man who taped a number of reporters, including Chris Cuomo, right. under, under circumstances that are sh really, really scurrilous. He took, a, he took his phone, he made a big play of putting it in, in, in a drawer, locking it, telling uh, Cuomo he wasn't being taped, and then taping him for two hours, and getting him to say personal things. Right. And, so, spe and speaking of so taping... So, of course, if he, if, he, if he would have testified, we would point out, can you believe that this man w wouldn't lie in order to stay out of jail? And speaking of, of taping, Mr. Mayor, um, on Meet the Press this morning, Omarosa, who was fired from the White House eight months ago, oh, played a tape, or NBC played the tape of John Kelly. Unreal. Um, yeah, Giuliani makes excellent points, and they're calling him a nut job. Well, the uh, nut job are actually the media and the left who suffer from Trump derangement syndrome. Sorry about that. This site has these pop-ups. I, I was listening to it, had no idea the pop-up was coming up. Uh, but yeah, Giuliani makes an excellent point about the perjury trap that Mueller said, uh, would say. If Comey says uh, uh, opposite of what Trump does say, then yeah, you're going to catch him in a perjury trap because they have to go along with what Mueller thinks. So there you have it. It's a setup. It's a, it's a clear-cut setup. That's basically it. And people are, are hip to, uh, to Mueller's tactics. And, uh, you know, and, and I would never sit down with Mueller. I wouldn't even give him a, the time of day with this uh, phony uh, hoax of a witch hunt. It was a setup from the get-go. And enough is enough. Uh, shut it down, and uh, that's basically it. Uh, and uh, this could be shut down immediately if Jeff Sessions stepped up to the plate. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And again, thank you so much for watching.